Welcome to Minute School Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Now, as the tensions rise over the nationwide labor dispute between Canada's two major freight railways and the union representing their workers, rural communities across the Prairie Provinces are bracing for the impact. Now, as of Thursday, August 22nd, the two major railway companies locked out the over 9,000 workers, causing stoppage of trains across Canada. Now, this stoppage is raising concerns, alarms, and so much more with the association representing rural municipalities in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. These groups, including the Rural Municipalities of Alberta, Saskatchewan Association of Rural Municipalities, and the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, are particularly concerned about the devastating effects the disruption will have on prairie agricultural producers, consumers, and other industries critical to rural economies. Now, the three organizations are calling on the federal government to impose binding arbitration if an agreement cannot be reached between the railway and the union. Now, these three municipal groups say that the stakes are high. Even a short-term stoppage would severely impact the agriculture sector, which is already struggling with limited access to rail cars for moving harvest to market. Now, we sat down and chatted with SARM interim president Bill Huber about the stoppage and what it will mean for farmers, municipalities in the province of Saskatchewan and across Western Canada. This is Municipal Affairs. President, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to take a moment and just start off with the big news that happened this morning. Uh, the two major freight lines in Canada locked out 9,000 workers and effectively shut down the rail system. This comes a day after SARM, RMA, AMM, all called on the federal government to intervene before this happened. What's your reaction to the today's news? Very disappointing. Um, it's unfortunate that, <clears throat> that we had to get into this situation and they, they're locked out. Uh, uh, we both uh, Alberta and Manitoba and the Saskatchewan associations tried to encourage, you know, Minister uh, McKinnon to uh, to introduce uh, ar arbitration to keep the the Teamsters Union employees or the CN and CPKC employees working. And it's unfortunate that didn't happen. So now we are in a lockout position, which is uh, it's devastating, especially at this time of the year, uh, in late August and in, in middle of, uh, or just at the beginning of harvest actually in Saskatchewan. And in Alberta, we've got some of the harvests already, you know, halfway completed. So couldn't it be worse timing? <clears throat> Another unfortunate, Thing is both railways walking off at the same time never in in my lifetime has that happened so what does that mean for rural rural saskatchewan rural canada what does this stoppage actually mean because the news release says it, it will be detrimental if this happens now that it has happened what will it mean to your members your member communities and just canadians across canada right now well, our members, the majority of them in our province in Saskatchewan are farmers. Agriculture is a big part of this province. It drives the economy with exports. And grain and oilseed shipments are crucial to the viability of our farming operations. Uh, we're just starting harvest now, and you know, a couple of weeks in, some parts of southern Saskatchewan and southwest are further advanced. But in my area, just uh, sort of uh, east central, is uh, it's just nicely getting going. So we've got pulses and... and uh, and malt barley harvest well underway now. And producers, uh, you know, they depend on, on shipment and movement of, of grain. We can't store it all on farm. So we rely on the railroads to, to uh, move this out of our inland terminals to port facilities for export. Very critical this time of the, re of the year, not only to free up space for producers, but also for cash flow. It's a time of year where, where expenses are, are high and they are high all the time, but uh, a lot of bills today this time of the year and uh, no cash flow. And uh, so it's devastating. And, you know, it not only affects agriculture, but it affects so many other parts of, uh, of the economy. You know, we can talk about, uh, you know, uh, beef products moving out of the province. And we can talk about, uh, you know, chlorine and stuff for water treatment plants, for treating potable water in towns and cities and villages. And, and it can be manufactured all over, but 
a lot of that moves by rail. So um, it's uh, it's every day this stays this, they stay locked out or on strike is going to be devastating and it'll just continue to get worse. So there's been reports that the two sides are trying to talk, but they're not really talking. They're sort of uh, uh, far apart on many different issues around safety. What do you hope that the federal government will do today? Because it is now officially in lockout time. We're officially locked out. That means that no rail cars are moving. That means your farmers are going to be struggling. <laughs> what do you hope now that the federal government will do? Because the ministers already come out and said, we can't just re reconvene the parliament tomorrow on a whim. So what do you hope the federal government will do? Well, the way I understand it, I think binding arbitration can be done without calling Parliament. So they could, the minister could initiate under uh, uh, Clause 107 of the Labour Agreement to uh, to force them into binding arbitration. That would would assure that they'd have to go back to work, and negotiations between the the railways and and the union would have to uh, continue on until they come to some kind of a settlement. So we're in early days of this lockout. Hopefully it does not drag on because it could be even worse for your members. What are you telling your member communities right now about how they have to sort of navigate the next few days, next week, hopefully only the next few hours, but what are you explaining to your members of SARM to sort of help them navigate the next few hours? Well, all I can say is, uh, is SARM and our association that I represent and, and as acting president is that uh, we've been working on this for three or four days. I've been on continuous phone calls on video conferences with uh, industry leaders and, uh, and union or railway uh, employees and, and chief of staff throughout. And uh, we've been talking about this and, and kind of with some optimism of hopeful that it, it wouldn't have come to a lockout position at midnight, but uh, we're telling our members, we're doing everything we possibly can. I've been in contact with, with several different individuals across the country in the last days and hours, and that will continue. I'll continue to, to work on that along with our staff here at the office. This is very, very important uh, to, to get this resolved as soon as possible for our members and for the whole the whole nation, really, the, the, the economy and the, and the well-being of the, of the country. Have you spoken to anyone in the federal government? No, I've uh, I've reached out to some individuals. Haven't had any personal uh, contact with them. Have talked to uh, our minister of agriculture and, uh, of course, other a few other people, but uh, nothing really. I mean, everybody's doing their part. We're working tirelessly to uh, to to do what we can and and keep working and with SARM to keep our members abreast of, of where we're at and what uh, what we're trying to accomplish. Well, they know what we're trying to accomplish. It's what we're, we are doing and. Uh, and uh, and we and we will do everything and continue to. So, what's the next steps for SARM then? Because this is still early days, like I've said a few times. But your your work does not stop once we're off this phone call. It continues on. So, what are you doing as president of the association to ensure that you are trying to help the federal government, the two sides, come together to an agreement, or is it sort of out of your hands right now? Well, it is uh, sort of out of our hands, but we're going to continue to follow up with other organizations and, and, the, and the CN and CPKC uh, as to what uh, progress they are making with, with the union. And if there is any hopeful possibility that the minister, you know, brings in arbitration, you know, and if it, if it doesn't happen, we're going to keep uh, issuing news releases and, and making phone calls and different contacts whoever we think can help, you know, whether we go to our local MPs or, 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 you know, the Minister of Agriculture, Federal Minister of Agriculture, but we will reach out to individuals that we can possibly talk to and express our deep concern, how, how this is going to affect on not only agriculture in the province of Saskatchewan, but the oil and gas industry and, uh, and the movement of, of essential products uh, coast to coast. Um, what's your message to Prime Minister Trudeau right now? If you had a chance to speak to him, what would your message to him about what's going on and how it's affecting your province and your communities? What would your message to him be? Well, I'd like to just say, you know, Mr. Prime Minister, I think it's time that uh, that we realized how important uh, the railways are. And, uh, and SARM has pushed uh, 
for uh, for several years now to have uh, rail service uh, deemed an essential service, and 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 we'd say that that I'd say that to him, and I'd also ask him that you really have to understand, Mr. Prime Minister, how important Western Canada is is to uh, the security of food and export around the world. Uh, you know, we 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 ship 40 uh, we have 40 percent of the arable land in this province and we ship approximately 80 percent of our product out of this province so saskatchewan is a big contributor to global food security around the world we have customers around the world that depend on our pulses and our oil seeds and canola oil it's crushed here a lot of it is crushed right in saskatchewan that all has to move by by freight on trains you know, we can't just, uh, <clears throat> I'm telling you, we just can't move stuff with trucks. It's almost impossible, and especially to port facilities, because there's no, uh, you know, really easy access to unload tractor trailer units there. So I'd be, you know, really try to express our concern in a, in a really uh, polite and fashionable manner to have them really sit down and, and realize how devastating this is. Not yeah. only to Saskatchewan, but all of Canada. Do you think he hears that message or do you think he's uh, not worried about it right now because he's waiting, letting the process sort of work itself out, letting the two sides come to an agreement rather than just forcing an agreement upon him? Well, I think he hears it, but there's a, I always use the old saying, you know, sometimes they hear you, but they don't listen. And, uh, and maybe that's where he's at right now. I don't know. I think, I think there, I don't expect anything, uh, in the in the hours ahead, I think we're into this for a day or two at least. But I, if I had the opportunity to speak to him, I'd uh, I'd, uh, I'd really plead with him how urgent this is for uh, for the whole Canadian economy and and how devastating it it can be. And every day we're in this strike position, it takes approximately seven to ten days for catch up. So even when they get back to work, if it's tomorrow, we've lost a week or two because CN and CP have been putting trains aside for the last five to seven days. They're getting them off the sidings, out of, of drive or out of road allowances, so they're not blocking traffic in any other way. But they are ready and capable to uh, fire up almost immediately once the strike has ended or arbitration is introduced. They can go to back to work and get things moving in a pretty short time. But for every day we lose, <clears throat> we're going to lose a week or 10 days of uh, catch up. Final question for you here, Bill, before I let you go, and I want to thank you for your time, but what haven't we talked about that you want to make sure Canadians know about this strike and how it's going to affect them? Because when some Canadians look at a strike, they're saying, okay, it's not going to affect me. But for you, who's listening to the members, who's listening to farmers, what's the message you want Canadians to understand about what's going on and how it could impact them? Well, I want them to understand that it, you know, it's not only uh, grains and oil seeds that we move, but uh, you know, in the grain industry, I, I'd like to express the concern that we have here at SARM. And uh, railways are, are are a busy busy part of uh, of the economy, and they move a lot of product, as everyone knows. But the thing we have to uh, be cognizant of is that even when things are running hundred percent smoothly. It's tough for, for CN and CP to get all that grain and oil seeds to market in a timely fashion when there's a good crop out there because they're maxed out to capacity. So, so you shut down for a week or two weeks in this time of the year, we just get so far behind that there never will be a catch up. Because going forward, we could see floods, we can see extreme cold in the winter where it pre prevents movement for days. So there's all those challenges ahead, even when they're back to work. So. I, I just can't say enough of how important it is to end this as quick as we can, as fairly as we can, and uh, and get everybody on a, on a <clears throat> happy level playing field. So I said that was my last question, but I do have one follow-up. You, you mentioned something there that I do want to ask about. Um, last year, I sat down with then President Ray Orb about the drought conditions in Saskatchewan around farmers and crops. Um, this strike on top of last year's drought, this year it wasn't as wet as many people wanted it to be. Are farmers struggling right now in Saskatchewan? 
Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of areas <clears throat> that are still struggling. Agriculture is a tough business. It really is. And, uh, and we've had four to five years of drought in the south and southwest part of the province. Our area where I farm and, and, and live is a, is a little better. We haven't been that dry. But this is the first year in uh, three or four years in a big part of the province that we've, we've got an above average crop to be harvested. I don't think it's the bumper because we had, you know, severe heat in, in July that uh, I think it took a little bit of our yield, especially when we started running out of, of, of moisture later in the month. But, uh, you know, we still got a, a, <clears throat> a near record crop to, uh, to move. And, uh, you know, and, and as far as producers go, that, you know, we've all struggled in the last years with, uh, with drought and low, low prop production. And, uh, you know, this might have been the catch up year where, you know, prices are, are, are going down and, and they're not as in, where they should be really to meet the, the, the costs of our inputs. But without any movement, it's, it's terrible. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not an easy game we're in. We're, we're risk takers and, uh, and for the most part, farmers and ranchers are uh, workaholics. They, they, they give it all to feed a hungry world and, and they're proud of it and proud to do it. And they love doing it. But uh, have challenges like this, it just sort of takes the wind out of your sails. And that was SARM interim president Bill Hooper with us to talk about the ongoing rail strike. If you enjoyed today's episode and interview, please hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our great conversations that we have coming up for our season three. Yes, we are back. Full episodes over the next few months. So stay tuned, stay informed, and make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you stay updated. Until next time, just keep talking.